So we're going to switch gears now from voltaic cells to electrolytic cells. And at the beginning of the video, uh, at the beginning of the video series, we said that electro electrolytic cells are non-spontaneous. Um, so these require us to plug them in to an external power source, um, an external electrical power source, like, for example, plugging your cell phone into the wall. Um, and the reaction that's going to be run is going to have a negative voltage meaning a negative cell potential, meaning we have to apply whatever that potential is. We have to add that potential in order to get the reaction to run. So if we had to give a definition for electrolysis, it would be as follows. It would be any process uh, using electrical energy Uh, to affect a non-spontaneous reaction. Um, and so again, a couple of things. So these cells are going to have an E cell that is negative. They're going to have a delta G naught that's going to be positive. Their K is going to be less than 1. Uh, so they're going to favor the reactants instead of the products. And um, we have to apply, uh, so and we have to, uh, I guess the best way to say it is that work has to be done on the system to make it go. Um, so the classic example of this is um, the production of things like uh, sodium and, chlora and chlorine gas from um, a molten salt of NaCl. So for example, the down cell uh, is where we take two NaCl liquid um, and we make two Na solid plus Cl2 gas. Uh, this requires a high temperature at 801 degrees Celsius to get it to melt. So uh, you'll notice that the phase label here is a liquid. Then we stick our electrodes in and we got to apply a potential. So let's look at the cathode and anode reactions for this. So the cathode and the anode, in this case, the cathode is going to be sodium plus plus one electron goes to sodium. And the anode is going to be Cl minus goes, uh, uh, sorry, two Cl minus goes to Cl2 gas plus two electrons. So um, those are going to be our anode and cathode reactions. And if you get the numbers for those, um, what that's going to be is E cell is going to equal minus 2.71 volts, something very, very um, non-spontaneous. And then we're going to subtract from that minus 1.36 volts. So this is going to give us a, a grand total of minus 4.07 volts. So to make sodium and to make sodium metal and chlorine gas, we have to apply a 4 volt potential or 4.07 volt potential at minimum just to get the reaction to start up. And then generally you have to apply even more potential. It's called an over potential to get the rate of the reaction to be fast enough to make this, the, the stuff, the sodium and the chlorine. So um, you can see that this is, this, is an, this is how we would set up an electrolytic cell. We would have to apply an external potential to make it work. Now with molten salt, um, so this is a case of this is the case of molten salt. Um, we can do this pretty easily because in a molten salt we have our liquid which contains the ions. And so when you stick your electrode in, the ions are right there for you to work with. The problem in the problem with this is when we use aqueous electrolytes. So when we use aqueous electrolytes to do electrolysis, we have a couple of different processes that can happen. So there's kind of a, there's basically a limit of what you can, a, a, a potential window or a potential limit for what you can do in an aqueous electrolyte. So, for example, water, if you just take water and you apply a potential to it, you can make hydrogen and oxygen gas. We could write out the anode and cathode for this, and um, we can make hydrogen and oxygen gas. This is called the water splitting reaction. 
Um, this reaction is actually really important because what a lot of people are trying to do today um, is to take sunlight and um, run this reaction. If we could run this reaction and make hydrogen, this is a fuel that could be used in a fuel cell which could power a car, for example. That's what, one of the things that my research lab is doing, um, is looking at how we can do artificial photosynthesis to make uh, hydrogen and oxygen gas from, from water using sunlight. So because aqueous electrolytes can be oxidized and reduced, we have what we call a potential window that develops. So let's just say that we have an acid. And for the sake of our, um, for the sake of this course, we're just going to look at um, acidic electrolytes because it kind of makes things a little easier than in basic conditions. So there are two processes that can happen in acid. So in acid, we have uh, one electrochemical process that's around. So we have some protons hanging around. So if we give the protons electrons, um, this is going to make hydrogen gas, and this occurs at zero volts. So if we have an acidic solution, we have an electrochemically active species in there, H+, and when we hit zero volts, the electrode is going to start doing this. So this effectively sets the lower limit for our potential window. And then the upper limit is going to be where we take water and we oxidize it to make oxygen gas plus 4H plus plus four electrons. So these are these these reactions are in the the table of standard reduction potentials. And the uh the potential for this, this is not a this is not a reduction potential now. This is the actual potential. This is at 1.23 volts. So effectively if our our electrochemical window um, at zero volts and at 1.23 volts, so if we go above 1.23 volts, we're going to make oxygen gas. And if we go below zero volts, we're going to make hydrogen gas. So inside of this window, this is where we can do electrolysis. If we pick something that's outside of this window, it's not going to work. So for example, if we wanted to try to reduce sodium metal um, in this case, so can we reduce sodium metal in an acid? Uh, the answer is going to be no, because if you look at it, Na plus plus one electron gives Na solid. Let me just fix that. Okay, gives Na solid. The E reduction for this is equal to minus 2.71 volts. So in order for us to do this reduction, we would have to bring the potential down to minus 2.71 volts. But as we did that, we would hit zero volts first. That comes first before we get to minus 2.71. So what would happen is, is the cell would start to produce hydrogen gas because at zero volts, that, that's going to be our reduction. We would never make it down to 2.71 volts because we would just continue to produce more and more hydrogen gas. So let's look at an example of, let's look at an example of um, the electroplating of copper sulfate in, in an acidic solution. Uh, this is a good one. So let's say we were to take one molar copper sulfate. And the reason why we ha we're using one molar is because we have um, standard conditions. So we can use the standard cell potentials. And we put this into 0 0.5 molar H2SO4. So this is the thing, this is our substrate. So this is what we want to do electrolysis on. And this is our electrolyte. And we need an electrolyte to increase the conductivity of the solution. The reason why this is also typically done in acid is because it, it, it makes the copper a bit more so soluble and it works a little bit better. Um, so typically, uh, if we wanted to electroplate copper sulfate in... Um, in something we would put it in an acid. So let's look at the possible cathode reactions and let's look at the possible anode reactions. So possible cathode and possible anode. So we have a, we have a, we have a couple of species that we can reduce in solution. Our two choices are 
copper 2 plus and H plus. Um, those are the two ions that we could reduce in solution. Um, we're not going to, you, you're never going to be able to reduce sulfate because that's just not going to happen. So if you were to look up the sulfate reduction potential, it'd be some crazy number. So we're going to focus on the two ions that have reasonable reduction potentials, which are copper and hydrogen. So um, the copper two plus plus two electrons gives copper metal. This has a reduction potential E equals 0 0.34 volts. And so our 2H plus plus two electrons gives H2 gas is going to give us E of zero volts. So remember, this is our lower limit. So 1.23 volts. So zero volts is our lower limit and our 1.23 volts is our upper limit. So when it comes to the cathode, the copper is at plus 0 0.34 volts. So this is the one that's gonna take place because it's more spontaneous than um, the hydrogen gas and it falls within our window. So when we select our cathode reaction, we're gonna select the copper because it's more spontaneous than the, the hydrogen gas formation um, and we can do it at a potential that's higher than that. Now let's look at the possible anode reactions. So our substrate could be SO42 minus. So we could um, potentially oxidize SO42 minus. This would make S2O8 2 minus, oops, 2 minus plus 2 electrons. And this cell potential is equal to uh, positive 2, um, I'm sorry, this is equal to minus 2.01 volts for this oxidation. And then we have uh, H2O goes to uh, O2 plus 4 electrons plus 4H plus. And this is equal to minus 1.23 volts. So in this case, remember, our outer limit is 1.23 volts. So we, in order to oxidize SO42 minus, we would have to go to a potential of over 1.23 volts. So that S208 is going to be sitting out over here, and we're not going to, we're not going to be able to see that. So our, the only anode reaction that we could possibly have is going to be our H2O oxidation, which is at... Um, when I give these negatives, these are the reduction potentials, so we're going to flip those around. Let me just make this a little bit more clear. So let me make those numbers positive because we have this written. So those negatives were from the standard reduction potentials, but the way I have it written here, these are oxidation, so we're going to flip them around to be the positives. So um, these are going to be uh, positive values of plus 1.23 volts. So the S208 is going to fall outside of our window, so our and our anode reaction is going to be the oxidation of water. So in this case, our E cell then we can take is going to be our cathode, which is 0 0.34 volts minus our anode, which is going to be 1.23 volts, which is going to give us a cell potential of minus 0 0.89 volts. Um, we have to apply that to get the reaction to occur. So that just gives you a sense of how you would go about thinking about this. Basically, the only processes that are going to happen are going to be between 0 volts and 1.23 volts. And you have to look to see where your anode, possible cathode and possible anode reactions will fall. So in this case, we're going to get the reduction of copper, but we're going to get the, the oxidation of water because the SO42- minus falls outside of the uh, electrochemical window. So that covers um, an introduction to electrolytic cells and an introduction to electroplating. Uh, in the next video we're going to look at, we're going to look at how we can use stoichiometry and relate that to electrolysis. So um, that's coming up and that's going to look at how we can look at how many moles of some kind of product we produce um, based on the amount of charge that's passed.